Qualifying is over in Spain and Max Verstappen takes what is probably his most dominant pole position of his career so far. And whilst I might sound very boring to many, as we've come somewhat accustomed to his domination, behind Max there was a lot of twists, turns and shocking moments. And in today's video we're going to be looking at qualifying and doing a data analysis from what was a hectic Saturday before Sunday's main Grand Prix. As usual, I'll be talking about the likes of Ferrari, Mercedes, Red Bull and Aston Martin a little bit later on, so stick around for that because there is a lot of interesting data that we are going to be looking at. As I mentioned, whilst yes, Verstappen being on pole is not really a surprise to anyone, the qualifying was anything but boring as the circuit de Catalunya Barcelona started off in damp conditions with the drivers struggling to find grip on their slick tyres and we saw some cars and drivers struggle whilst others excelled. But which midfield cars really struggled in qualifying? Well, as I mentioned in my practice video, one team that was really struggling this weekend is the Williams team. And in free practice three, we got a very good understanding as to why Williams is massively lacking downforce. And you can see that when we take a look at the underside of the Williams after Sargent's incident in FP3 and compare that to the underside of the Mercedes or the Red Bull from their crashes in Monaco. In those incidents, you can clearly see why the Williams is lacking downforce as their floor is a lot more basic and simple when compared to the top teams. On track, you can see the difference that that made as you compare the fastest lap from Alex Albon in Q1 to the lap time of Lando Norris from the McLaren, also in Q1. From this graph, you can see very clearly where the Williams is losing out. Both McLaren and Williams have had very difficult starts to the 2023 season, but for very different reasons. Williams is lacking downforce, but is very fast in a straight line, whereas McLaren is very slow in a straight line. However, they have great downforce in high-speed corners. Due to this, you can see that Norris is able to carry significantly more speed into Turn 3, and also through the final couple of corners. As I mentioned in the practice video for Williams, this weekend is all about survival and then moving on to the next race, which should be a lot better for them in Montreal. Speaking of McLaren though, they had an incredible qualifying session and this was by quite some distance their strongest performance of the year so far as Lando Norris incredibly finds himself all the way up in P3 on the grid. The Barcelona circuit is one that suits McLaren very nicely as they have a very good amount of downforce as I've mentioned in the past and that means that even though their top speed is very low, they are still able to produce great laps. In fact, you can see just how low their top speed is when looking at this craft produced by Formula Data Analysis, whose Twitter account I have linked in the description below. For McLaren, they can take a lot of confidence knowing that they have a great car this weekend. However, I believe in the race, they will have to be very wary of the cars behind them because their car is so slow in a straight line that they could essentially be sitting ducks when it comes to the end of the long pit straight. Alpine are another midfield team that are in a good position in my opinion and they have good potential to take their second podium of the year with Pierre Gasly lining up in fourth place on the grid. Gasly needs to try and nail the start at the beginning of the race and when we go back to this graph showing the top speed of the cars you can see that Alpine is significantly faster than the McLaren car in a straight line. Let's now compare the fastest lap in qualifying of Lando Norris to Pierre Gasly to see what differences we can see. Unsurprisingly, the Alpine has significantly higher speed going into Turn 1 and also on the run from Turn 3 into Turn 4. McLaren, however, is able to make up a lot of time by getting onto the power sooner than Alpine is able to due to their car probably having better mechanical grip. Also going into the final two corners, you can see McLaren are able to carry more speed and that is just enough to give them the edge to put Norris in P3 and Gasly down in P4. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I know subscriptions don't mean as much as they used to due to the algorithm being as good as it is now, but I would still personally greatly appreciate it if you just tap that little button. Now, let's get back to the video and also let's start talking about the top four teams and let's start with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, this was probably their most difficult qualifying session of the year. 
Fernando Alonso made an error at the beginning of Q1, and this error seriously compromised him for the rest of the qualifying session. He ran through the gravel trap, and in doing so, damaged the floor of the Aston Martin, and you could see how it affected him between each session, as the mechanics were on the floor trying desperately to fix any damage caused. This meant that for the first time this season, Lance Stroll has been close and actually managed to beat his teammate in qualifying as Lance Stroll is starting the race in P6, whilst Alonso is way down the order in P9. Aston Martin will be very disappointed with this result because this will massively restrict their potential for scoring a podium in the Grand Prix. One thing though that may work in their favour if the race is actually dry is that tyre wear may become a factor and Aston Martin have typically been very kind on their tyres so far this year and if it's necessary this could be a saving grace for them in what is otherwise a very disappointing qualifying session. For Ferrari, the qualifying session was an ultimate tale of two halves as Carlos Sainz qualifies the Ferrari in P2 whereas Charles Leclerc was really struggling with his Ferrari and is all the way down in P19 and starting the Spanish Grand Prix from the back row of the grid. But how did this happen and where did it all go wrong for the Ferrari of Leclerc? Because on paper, the Ferrari is the second best car this weekend, only behind the all-dominant Red Bull. Well, let's take a look at the fastest lap in Q1 for both Leclerc and Sainz to see where Leclerc lost all of his time during the qualifying session. When you compare their laps, it becomes very clear where Leclerc was losing out, and I think it is simply down to a lack of confidence in the car for Charles. This is their Q1 laps in identical conditions, but as you can see, Leclerc is way off what Sainz is able to do. You can see on the run into turn 4, Sainz is constantly faster all the way through turn 3, meaning he has more confidence and grip in the car. Sainz is also able to get to full throttle slightly faster through other parts of the lap as well, and then going into the hairpin and through sector 3, Sainz is almost in another formula when compared to his teammate. Leclerc slows down more going into the initial hairpin and then carries a lot less speed going through the right-handed hairpin up the hill and then finally going through the final couple of corners you can see Sainz just carries way more speed than Charles meaning that Leclerc simply has no hope of being able to fight his teammate. This was not just a one-off bad lap either for Leclerc as all of his laps in Q1 looked very slow and like he was struggling a lot. Whether or not he went the wrong way with setup, I'm not too sure, but I do know this, his race has been heavily compromised. One thing that will work in Leclerc's favour, however, is that it seems that following an overtaking at Barcelona is easier now with the final couple of corners being changed from last year. For Sainz, he had a brilliant session, but was still a long way behind the Red Bull of Max Verstappen on pole position. For Mercedes, they had an interesting session, which was compromised slightly by George Russell and Lewis Hamilton coming together. These two drivers coming together is potentially what helped lead to Russell's elimination from Q2, in my opinion. This was entirely the fault of George Russell, though, as you can see when comparing their overall laps in qualifying. You can see that Hamilton has had the measure of his teammate all the way through qualifying, and in some ways he's had the measure of George Russell ever since the team dropped the zero pod concept. In the race tomorrow, Hamilton will be looking for a podium as he looks to take the fight to the McLaren of Norris and also the Alpine of Pierre Gasly. He should be able to get in front and beat both of them and find himself on the podium, in my opinion. For Red Bull, at least Max Verstappen, this qualifying session was complete and utter domination, and potentially was the easiest pole position of his career. He dominated the entire weekend leading up to this point, and it had a feeling of inevitability. For Perez, however, this was another disappointing session, and with the image of Red Bull pulling out a new chassis, it seems that Perez's weekend might be about to go from bad to worse as his championship takes another critical blow with him dropping out of qualifying in Q2 and not even making it through to the final part of qualifying. In the race, 
Perez has to make sure that he can make some clean overtakes, which is what he struggled to do in Monaco. But like I said before with Leclerc, with overtaking being slightly easier, Perez should be able to do that and score some decent points in this Grand Prix. But I don't think he'll be able to get onto the podium, sadly, for him. So, with that in mind, what do I think will be the top 5 in tomorrow's Spanish Grand Prix? Well, in P5, I am actually going to go for Pierre Gasly in the Alpine. In P4, it will be Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin. Carlos Sainz will be in P3. Lewis Hamilton will finish in 2nd place. And Max Verstappen will win the Spanish Grand Prix. But the question is though, what do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.